Hey guys, so in this video we'll introduce projectile motion. Projectile motion is motion of an object only under the influence of gravity. So motion only under the influence of gravity. So and what do we mean by that? So we mean that Let's say I have a ball over here, right? Now, I can move this ball as long as it is in my hand. It's not exclusively under the influence of gravity, right? Now, I can move it at a constant velocity. I can shake it. I can, you know, accelerate it as uh, at any rate I want, depending on my strength, of course. Um, now, if I let it go, now, as long as it was in between, so when I let, I let it go, it was only under the influence of gravity until it hit the table, right? So the so during that part of the motion, it was only uh, under the influence of gravity, and of course, we are ignoring air resistance, right? So this is like a basic introduction to projectile motion. So we will ignore air resistance, okay? So <clears throat> so we'll ignore air resistance. And you know it's it's a very it's it's a good approximation like for uh, spherical objects like this uh, the the effect of air resistance is very small so we can you know um, definitely uh, make that approximation so when I let the ball go and ignoring air resistance the acceleration of the ball is negative g okay and the negative sign here means that. Uh, acceleration points down okay so the convention is that uh, our coordinate system the, the most common convention is that downward is negative upward is positive so that's um, that's the convention we'll use okay now uh, we know that if an object so, so now this ball moves with constant acceleration right now the motion the equations that describe the motion of this object are the ones that you you have studied before we've discussed these equations before in the position versus time graphs video um, that an object with a constant acceleration so this is just like a review of those equations so uh, an object with constant acceleration the position at any time is x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus half a t squared and um, uh, two a delta x equals v squared minus v naught x squared and then uh, v equals v naught x plus a t, okay? So these are the equations. So again, this is constant acceleration. Now, <clears throat> this is also constant acceleration. So when you let the ball go, the ball, or, or even if you throw the ball in any direction, the ball accelerates at this rate, okay? So this is constant acceleration. Now, one of the important things that you should remember that, that you should remember that this is acceleration, right? In the vertical direction, okay? So this, we're, we're gonna use a symbol Y over here, okay? Now, when you throw an object, now if you throw the ball like this at, at some angle, right, so that it goes like, you know, it goes like this, um, let's say that you throw the ball like this, right? Now, there are two directions, right? The x direction and the y direction, right? The acceleration, this acceleration is only in the y direction. Let's just show the, y, the, the accelerations for now. So you have negative g over here, negative g over here, negative g over here. At every point, the acceleration in the vertical direction is downward, okay? And the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. So there is no acceleration in the x direction. That's, that's very important. That's another important thing about projectile motion. So these two, two things, that the acceleration in the y direction is negative g, and the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So you have two directions, and these equations you have, you'll apply, you'll 
uh, put in these values uh, of accelerations in these equations, okay? So when you take these equations and plug in a, a, a y equals negative g, so let's plug in a, a, a x equals zero first. So for, let's call these equations, set of equations uh, a, okay? So if you take those equations a and set um, a equals zero, then you just get what? So so this gives you um, this is zero. So this gives you x equals x naught plus v naught x t, and this so, so this is zero. So you just get v squared equals v naught squared. This is equal. So this is equal to zero. So you get v equals v naught. So these two two equations are trivial. They just say that the velocity doesn't change. So the only equation that you get for the uh, x direction, I'm just gonna write this as delta x, x minus x naught equals v naught x t. So delta x is x minus x naught, okay? So that's your x equation, okay? So this equation is only for the horizontal direction, okay? And now if you take equation, the set of equations A, and then you set, um, let's use it, for that. So, so if you said a equals a, a equals a y equals negative g, then you get your y equation, you get your vertical equations. Again, this is the horizontal equation, then you get another set of equations for the vertical direction. So you get y equals y naught plus v naught y t minus half g t squared. So what so, so that's the reason I'm doing it this way is to emphasize that there, there are no new equations. You already know these equations. These equations are typically introduced in the second chapter of books, right? And then you move on to vectors and then uh, you use the same set of equations in two independent directions. And you bring together the physics using vectors, okay? So, uh, yeah, the other, the other equation is that uh, minus two g delta y equals vy squared minus v naught y squared and vy equals v naught y minus gt. So that's your second set of equations. That's for the y direction, okay? So these are, these are your equations for a projectile. And when you fire, when you, let's say, uh, launch a projectile, it's a velocity v, v naught, now this is for the expression. Let's look at the velocity, right? Let's draw another diagram over here. So let's say that you launch a projectile, okay? Now you launch it with some velocity v naught, okay? Now the, the, this velocity, let's say you launch it, launch it at an angle of theta, right? Uh, <clears throat> now this velocity is a vector quantity. This is your x direction, this is, this is y direction, right? This is physical space. This is like actually looking at the path of the ball. This is um, <clears throat> x versus y, not x versus t or x versus y versus t. This is physical space. So so there are two components of this velocity, right? So this is the, there has a v naught, uh, it has a y component, v naught y, which is v naught sine theta, and the x component is v naught cosine theta. Now remember, there is, again, important, there is no acceleration in this direction, okay? So ax is zero, and ay is negative g, okay? So what is the consequence of that? Uh, remember, when acceleration is zero, velocity is constant, okay? Because acceleration is delta v by delta t. So if acceleration is zero, velocity is constant. So since the acceleration and the acceleration is zero, there, the, this component will not change, okay? This component velocity does not change, whereas this will change at every point, okay? So if you draw the uh, velocity vectors, so, so let's say that the velocity is uh, over here, it's in this direction, let's say it's uh, in this direction, okay? And then over here it's in this direction. Okay. Now, as you um, so this this guy has uh, an x component, and this is uh, this has a y component, right? So so this is again still v naught x 
and this is vy, and this is different from this v not y, okay? And the, the, one of the important thing about these, this point at the top is that vy is equal to zero, okay? Whereas this is the, the, the blue arrow is just v not x over here. So it's horizontal, this is only the horizontal velocity. And then you have another component over here, v not x, that's still the same, and v not vy is negative now, okay? So you can see vy is continuously changing, and uh, v not x is, uh, is just the same, okay, as the initial component. So that's the important thing to remember that the, the vertical component of velocity changes at every point, and the horizontal component stays the same. So you have, to, you have to learn to think about two motions taking place. So it's like you throw this ball, it goes along this path, right? It's like, you know, you can imagine two, the motion of two balls, right? And um, you, you can imagine this ball somehow splitting into two and one of these going in co with constant velocity over here and one of these going, undergoing free fall. Okay, straight. And then you bring, if you combine the motion of these two, you get um, uh, projectile motion. Okay, so 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 this is uh, so th so these these components that we wrote over here are are, you, are these components, right? This is v naught cosine theta, and this is v naught sine theta. Okay, you can plug in. It makes the equations messy, but you know I'm not plugging it in, so you should understand that these are the components uh, of uh, velocity of initial velocity, and this is initial velocity. This is velocity at any time t. Okay. <coughs> Now, so, so this was my first video on projectile motion. I'll continue on. We'll in the in the next videos we'll uh, go into more detail and we'll derive the range and the maximum height for a projectile. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments um, and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.